Awesome. So here's the deal, you guys. On this section, we're going to be taking a look at the specific details of the different fingerprint patterns. Um, and so we're going to look very, very specifically at those ridges. So pay attention in your um, note packet as we're going through this stuff and watch out for these key details that help us distinguish and identify fingerprints. So as I mentioned in the previous video, the delta is an area that can be used um, to determine if the print is going to be a loop, a whirl, or an arch. Now, it looks kind of like a river delta, and that's why it was named that way. Here's what you need to know. Loops only have one delta. Whirls have two deltas, and arches have no deltas. Now, if we were to go back and look up at our diagram up here, when I look at the whirl, okay, here is a delta, and here is a delta. It's an area where the ridges actually converge and create kind of a triangular shape. Now, on the loop, where would you identify the delta? Hopefully you indicated right here, opposite of where the loop forms. Okay, So, we're going to continue on, and here's another thing that um, forensic examiners are going to look for. They're going to look for the presence of the core. It's the center of a whirl or a loop. Um, the deltas are usually near the loop, um, but the core itself enables them to perform another type of quantitative analysis called a ridge count. The ridge count is another characteristic that distinguishes one fingerprint from another. So basically you start at the center of the core and you count the number of ridges until you reach the delta. And so that's going to be fairly unique from person to person. When we look at loops, there can be two different types of loops. There's what's called a radial loop or an ulnar loop. Now if you take your hand and look at your hand right now, where your thumb attaches to your forearm, that bone right there in your forearm is called the radius. Your pinky attaches to the ulnar side of your hand, okay, or of your forearm. And so that's your ulnus, or yeah. Anyways, um, my words are eluding me today, sorry. So when we're looking at the loop, you want to look at does the bottom of the loop point out towards the thumb side of the hand or does it point out towards the pinky side of the hand? Now what's tricky is which way is the hand facing? And could it be flip-flopped? Because when you leave an impression, are you looking at the exact image or a mirror image? I want you to think about that because that's going to be one of the issues that comes up when we start to do our fingerprinting lab techniques. Now, whirls um, can be what's called a plain whirl, like a spiral, and that's the one that is depicted right over here. And then there's what's called the double loop. Um, and if this is not in your packet, you need to add this one in. Now, the double loop reminds me of myself. Haha. <laughs> Don't ask why. Well, actually, I'll explain it to you anyways, even if you don't want to know. My first name is Shelly, and so to me, a double loop looks just like an S. Okay? So add that one to, the, to, to your packet if it's not there already. It's basically where two loops, one here and one here, um, kind of run up next to each other and create um, an interesting pattern. So there's also what's called a central pocket loop. So it looks just like a loop where the ridges continue in an arching pattern, wrap down and around itself. But at the very, very center, there's an area um, where there's almost like concentric circles right in the middle. Okay, The ridges actually fold in on themselves. Then there's what's called an accidental whirl. So when we look at the accidental whirl, check out the ridge patterns here. If you try and follow the ridges around, you get very confused about where are they actually going because it kind of looks, looks like it could be the central pocket loop because right in the very, very center right there, we can see that there's 
some concentric circles, but can you actually identify where there is a loop? Hmm, difficult to do. So that one's called an accidental whirl. All right, um, the next type of the fingerprint patterns that we talked about was the arches. And so there's what's called a plain arch and a tented arch. Now, when you think of a tent, Hopefully you think of the fact that there's those tent poles that hold it up. So I want you to think of those traditional style tents. Um, and there's typically, or originally, there was a main center pole. So the tented arch, and I know I'm doing these out of order, but the tented arch, the arch goes up, but you can see an area right in the center where there are ridges that extend up but don't come back down. So do you see coming from the right hand side right here, it goes up and then stops. So that's the tented arch. The regular plain arch just looks like a nice little mound or a hill. And it goes, all the ridges go all the way across the print, nice and neat. So remember that the uniqueness of those fingerprint patterns are due to the way those ridges are formed. Remember, they're randomly grown while in the womb. And some qualities are inherited. For example, whether you have whorls or loops is dependent on whether your parents had whorls or loops. But how those whorls or loops actually form are very, very specific. Your ridge count from the core out to your deltas is probably different. Um, it might be interesting to take a look at your parents and see, hmm, which fingerprints do I have that are the same? And how are they different? So remember that friction and pressure in the womb are what actually cause that final outcome. So your experience in the womb was very different from your parents and even that of your siblings. This is also another one of the reasons why even identical twins do not have the same fingerprints. Because in the womb, the friction and pressure that it's, that's exerted on their fingers, palms, feet, and toes is different. So just want to refresh your memory. Let's take a look at this diagram. And when we look at that diagram, um, which I think you can see some goofy boxes right here that aren't supposed to be here. Um, when you take a look at this diagram, um, oh well, I can't make it go away. Um, you can see that the ridges are formed on the surface. Okay, now I want you to note, here are the pores on the surface of the skin, but at the base of each pore is a sweat gland. So remember that the fingerprint is a physical impression that's left behind. And so how does that impression get left behind? Well, it's those oils and secretions from the sweat glands that leave that impression of the fingerprint of the ridges itself. So that's how we're able to collect it. Now, there are some very, very specific characteristics that we can look at within um, the, the fingerprint itself. And these are called minutia characteristics minutia because they are minute they're very very small okay so we're going to look at what's called a bifurcation we're going to take a look at an enclosure a ridge ending okay a dot a ridge crossing and an island or a short ridge um, there's some more here on the next page that we're going to look at but you can see over here in this example um, that there are some that are actually identified so a bifurcation occurs when the ridge splits into two an enclosure is when the ridge splits then comes back together. A ridge ending is where the ridge like literally just stops. It's like a dead end. A dot is going to be a tiny, tiny ridge that looks just like the dot of an eye. And then a ridge crossing is where there's two ridges that actually cross one another. Okay. Then there's what's called an island or a short bridge. An island might be a ridge that's longer um, than the dot. I'm sorry, I think that's typed wrong. But it's not very long. And then um, the last ones we have to talk about are the spur or hook. And um, what I want you to do is you're going to actually stop the video after I go through these and you're going to draw these visual appearances into your note packet somewhere because um, you're going to want to use them to refer to. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the spur or the hook, when we look at that one, it's number six. So the spur of the hook has a little ridge that just extends off. Okay. Um, the double bifurcation is number eight. It's where there's like a fork in the ridge, 
bifurcation, two forks in the road, right? And then there's a second one that makes it a double. Um, and then there's a trifurcation, and that's where a ridge would literally split into three separate ridge lines, okay? Please note these are not in the same order that they are in your packet, so make sure that when you go to draw these, that you draw them right next to um, the correct term, so that way you have an easy reference um, to come back to. So this is the end of this section of notes. So make sure that you're familiar with these because you're going to be um, you're going to be using these um, in the activity. Is it a match? And you're going to be trying to identify some of these minutia characteristics in your own fingerprints um, coming up within the next couple of days. So. Stop the video, make sure that you can see this section right here so that you can continue to draw those um, examples and have fun.